sun in the sky. You know how I feel. It's a new dawn. It's a new stage. It's a new strife. And I'm feeling good. Yesterday I got the, the good uh, rhythm after the refueling. Uh, let's see now these days if uh, we can record some time of uh, we lost the uh, details. Some musings there from Joan Barreda as he looked forward to the third stage, a long one, 733k and a semi-marathon. The mechanics only have two hours at the finish before the vehicles enter the bivouac and park ferme. What happened? Yeah, uh, I'm not really sure at the moment. Um, looks like looks like something bad, but engine. Yeah. I'm not really sure, but. For now, is I can't I can't keep going. 11 kilometers in and Sam Sunderland, 2022 champion, is forced to withdraw again. Last year on stage one, this year stage three. It's been a bad week for Sunderland, beaten 3-0 in the cup by local rivals Newcastle on Saturday. And now this, it looks like a few black cats have crossed his path, but we'll see you again next year, Sam. Kevin Benavidez broke his femur in February, his wrist in August and his fibula last month. Whoa there, easy champ. I started really focused on my navigation because yesterday I had some problems. Yeah, I am happy with the pace and the speed. I think uh, I did I did uh, good work. After a difficult day yesterday, the reigning champion took an eighth victory today after Pablo Quintanilla was demoted. Obligatory camel shot. It was Kevin's brother Luciano who lost his way today. He finished 12 minutes down. The first part, really tricky navigation. I get lost in one point and I lost some minutes, but yeah, it's like this and now it's time to Start again and do it better. Honda's Ricky Brabeck also made a couple of navigation errors, but recovered brilliantly to finish second. We rode, I mean, the best we could. Um, it was a long day for sure, and and uh, yeah, here we are. It's finished day three. I'm happy for this, and uh, definitely happy to be uh, starting stage four. Boom! Nice one, Ricky. Juan Barreda was in somber mood at Parc Ferme after seeing his hero teammate Sebastian Bula down and out of the rally. So bad for, for Basti because he crashed and I saw him in the, in the ground. I hope he cannot make any big injury and he can recover. Third place today for Adrian van Beveren. He said that by the time he was done, he felt frazzled, but he's bringing home the bacon out there. Fifth overall last year and fifth overall at the moment. Really tricky one, I would say, about navigation was a lot of navigation. Some parts were fast and some parts were really like slow and tricky navigation, mostly the end. Out here in the Saudi desert, coyotes hunt in packs and apparently so do Hondas. Overall leader Ross Branch is being chased by four of them, led by Cornejo, with Kevin, the best of the KTMs. On to four wheels now, and Alexandre Giroud, winner of the quads the past two years, is on his way back to form. He won today and clawed back 27 minutes. Giroud says his secret weapon is putting his Crocs on after a long day in bike boots. Well, he's certainly snapping at the heels of the top three, who are now Juraj Varga, Manuel Andujar and Marcelo Madeiros. test and my first dune with the car. Our chief love as Dakar fans is dunes, dunes and speed. Our two chief loves are dunes and speed and ruthless proficiency. Our three, you get the idea. I couldn't really judge my speed and I mean I didn't, I couldn't see over this so I just slowed down a bit at the top and then. This is the beginning of the dune section and we already stuck so <laughs> not going so good. Sand is not just part of Rally Raid, it's part of the desert itself. And this is not just the Dakar, this is Saudi Arabia, one of the most welcoming and hospitable countries in which you could find yourself in need of help. When you come to a different country, you need to ask locals, of course. Oh, Our uh, first okay, dune. Yes, sir. 
whether horizontal, vertical, or even on your knees. This is what it's all about. We were quite happy that we are going nice and without problems. <laughs> well, it's the car. No power horse. <laughs> we need a camel. <laughs> Czechs Holitzer and Engover are making their debut in a Citroen 2CV, i.e. 2 horsepower. It's a truly beautiful Dakar site, but 2 camel power may have been more appropriate. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Nassau Latia lies 5th overall, was 4th on the stage, finished on 3 wheels, only has 2 hours to work on the car and is one disappointed driver tonight. A little bit uh, damage in the left rear, uh, but okay, uh, we are here in the service and now uh, the mechanic fixed the cars and uh, uh, I think will be okay, no problem. Seb Loeb picked up yet more punctures today. There must have been some colourful language in that pro drive. Putain! It was a complicated day. Uh, we had three punctures, but we finished the stage. We lost 25 minutes, but uh, could be worse. We'll see. It could be worse, but it couldn't have been better for Lucas Moraes, last year's top rookie, today's top dog. Well, very happy. This has to go to my daughter, uh, this great result, because it has been a tough week, but all good luck. Since winning the prologue, Matthias Ekstrom hasn't really challenged at the front, but despite almost getting stuck in the dunes, the Swede finished second, just nine seconds back. If there's one name in Rally Raid that means more than any other to the Saudi Arabian people, it's Yazid Al Raji. Not easy stage with uh, no spare tyre, but everything under control. He's a real celebrity here, and his star is only going to keep rising. Third today, enough to take him to the lead of the Dakar for the first time. He and Carlos Sainz have an eight-minute lead on the chasing pack. Looking to make it four in a row and leading from kilometre 135, it was all under control again for the teenager Eric Gottschau. Until it wasn't, suddenly there was a glitch. And that glitch was Mitch, who proved he ain't nobody's bitch. The lead went back and forth, but it was Guthrie who took a first stage of this Dakar after five last year. Clean days, basically, and uh, get to the finish line every day, but keep a fast pace, of course. So, uh, so a long way to go, but it's good to get a stage win under our belt, I hope. Michal Gottschow dropped out of podium contention today, and remember it's a semi-marathon stage, so a race against time for the mechanics before the cars go to Parc Ferme. Joao Ferreira was hit by punctures yesterday in the T4s, but the Portuguese came back this morning. He led briefly, but in the end, he and Felipe Palmeiro finished second. But what a day for the Saudis in Saudi. Not only is Yazid Al Raji leading the ultimates, but in the T4s, a first ever Dakar stage win for Yasser Seydan. He knows these dunes so well, and it showed. Overtaking Gerard Fares with 100 to go, he never looked back. American rookie Sarah Price is enjoying herself. She's up to second. Like Gotchow in the challengers, Yanis van Kasteren was looking to make it four from four in the trucks. And just like Eric, he couldn't. The stage went to Alice Lopreich, who was the most consistent of the three front runners. The Czech in his truck, Lady Praga, put four and a half minutes into Magic and just over 16 into Van Kasteren. He also snatched the overall lead and the three-way battle for victory is hotting up. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed I've been calling this a semi-marathon stage. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's a bit complicated to be honest, which either means I don't really know or we've run out of time, but basically it's about tense. There's hardly any time for repairs, that's making things tense, and tonight the competitors have to sleep in, you guessed it, tents. Ta-ta for now, see you tomorrow.